Next up, we have the presentation by Dr. Ajit Kumar. Dr. Kumar is currently working as technical principal, RAMS, and has more than 20 years of vast experience in system and software engineering. Software engineering, system assurance, and RAMS, wrapped up with cross-functional domain knowledge of metro and rail industries. He has contributed to several metro and high-speed rail projects globally, such as High Speed to London, UK, Geelong Fast Rail Australia, R151 Singapore, RRTS India, Etihad Rail UAE, Dubai Metro Extension and Dubai Expo Link UAE, WSR United Kingdom, R2P Germany, as well as WDFCC India, etc. So, we are very glad to have him on board with us. Would like to take this privilege to call up on this stage. He is none other than Dr. Ajit Kumar, Technical Principal, RAMS, Mott McDonald, Bangalore. Everyone, please give him a big hand. Thank you very much. So, I not record. I will be talking on system assurance and RAMS, which is the very gray area in the Indian Railways and Metro as well. Since morning, I am listening many sessions. Everybody is talking about the reliability, safety, many things. And just now I finished the standardization of the Metro as well. So, first of all, till now, we don't have any RAMS standard in India. Okay? And definitely we are relying on a unit standard. And that is the area where we can work on. Okay. So, this is my coordinates. Some papers available in the cloud. If anybody is interested, they can go on this. I, I can give as well. So, before this subject start, system assurance and RAMS, let me take you history. The subject is the system assurance. And system assurance, you can see here, I was one project, these are the activities. In another project, I think it is Dubai project, these are the activities. It is the Malaysia project, these are the activities. And it is the currently Tihad Rail project, activities. So number of activities in system also is varying. RAM, safety, MIMC, verification, configuration, earthing bonding, fire life safety. What is things? There are n number of activities. So how to consolidate all those things? This is challenge here. Suppose recently I worked in the DFCC project, they are doing system assurance, they have three activities, RAM, safety, and EMC, that's all. And in Delhi Metro, recently they started system assurance, some activities. The challenge is what to include system assurance, what not to include. That is a big challenge. And nobody has answered till date. Even in any standard you can see, you will not find. No any standard, no ARIMA standard, no standard in the world. They will tell these are the activities you should do in system assurance. Then how to do system assurance? You can check, you can check in Google. You will not find a single word about system assurance, even if, even if you can verify right now. So how to do system assurance, that is the challenge. So that is why the area where we can play a big role. Okay, system assurance is the group of activities who can contribute, who can deliver RAM and safety. So RAM and safety is the key visible to you. Two outcome of the RAMs. And those activities indirectly feeding. Like in today's metro systems, none of the metro systems in India, we have 17 metro, they have fully implemented system assurance. But this is a gap. Somebody, in, somebody is doing. Like suppose, Alstom is delivering Lucknow metro. They are doing system assurance. But some other companies, they are not doing system assurance. So how to integrate until unless the client has defined system assurance policy? The intention is not to criticize, but the intention is to find the gap. Till now, none of the client is having system assurance plan. There are many people from government also, they can check and verify. None of the, none of the metro as a system level having system assurance plan and RAMS plan. They rely on the contractor. So, contractor had different capabilities. Some are very mature, some are non-mature. So, how to integrate all those things? In reliability systems, there are 10 systems 
all are in series. If one system is unreliable, whole system becomes unreliable. The reliability of whole system depends upon the weakest component. And that is the challenge, and that is I want to implement here. I want to show what is the issue in system assurance and how we can solve it. So when we talk about the RAMs, now I'm talking about RAMs. RAMs is the one of the fundamental activity of system assurance. Reliability, availability, maintainability, and safety. So I will not take much time. Time is already very limited. The one open challenge with me, why, why we need RAMs? The fundamental answer is the same Alstom train working very good in Europe and not working very good in Lucknow Metro. The same Nippon signal CBDC system, DMRC line 8, failing almost every quarter once. But not a single time last 25 years. You can check your data in the Google. Nippon signal signal system never fails since 25 years in Japan. But every quarter they are failing here. Why? The same design. The lack of implementation. Because they are not following the system of process, RAMS process and all these things. So why it is important, RAMS is important, that is I want to say. And that is the reason now, technically, all systems are same. The technical performance is similar to every system, what you are producing here and what you are producing in Japan. But implementation is not done here. And that is the area, and that's why Dr. Gautam mentioning standardization is required. We develop our standard, definitely everybody is adhered to follow the standard. And we can deliver the same, same type of operational performance. And that's why RAMS is important to deliver. The things you can't measure, you can't control. And the RAMS gives opportunity to measure. You are saying my system is reliable. What is reliable? How much is reliable? A reliability doesn't mean failure. A reliability has many parameters. Only failure is not reliable. Suppose you are telling my train will reach on 10, 10 p.m. and reaching on 10.5 p.m., it is unreliable. It is failure. Failure doesn't mean something is not working. Failure means deviation from the requirement. Even it is taking more energy, it is failure. Because the specifications say it will consume this much energy. The failures to be defined, you have to define everything in the RAMs. So what is RAMs? Why RAMs? When RAMs? I was taking a single example. Suppose let's say one example. There are many systems. All system reliability is 90%. Your system reliability becomes the 59%. All systems reliability is 100% and one is become 85%. Your system reliability is 85%. So, anti unless railway systems from rolling stock, signaling, track, wire, every system, if everybody is contributing something, not exactly equally, how to specify the target of every system? That is important. Even in rolling stock, one door fail, whole project becomes delayed. So, allocation of reliability in doors is also important. Because from client point of view, train got delayed, it is a failure. Who is contributing doesn't matter. So how to give target to rolling stock door, how to give target to track, even track also. Track failure, weld failure, everything is important. So this, this is not done properly, and there is a gap, and we can specify all those things. So I will take only a few seconds. Like a standard, since unfortunately we don't have Indian standards, till now, we rely on the European standard. And European standard EN 50126, they will give some kind of process framework for railway authorities, for rail support industries to come on a platform to integrate all the RAM and safety. So maybe in tomorrow we can develop our own standard, but now we have to depend on the EN standards. There is no choice at all. No choice at all as of now. So, why RAMs? Some metropolitan commissioner are saying branding. Branding is the RAMs. Customer comfort, safety, reliability, punctuality, legal, everything is RAMs. Performance requirement. See, 10 years back when I was traveling a train, train got 10 hour delayed, 5 hour delayed, no concern. But nowadays, if you're traveling in a train and your, your AC is not working, Immediately you're tweeting and tagging to the 
as we was no my ac is failed so now customer so aware so rams this is the rams because everybody is accounting everything not only safety performance comfort balancing life cycle cost requirement in many countries even in dubai all design finished only rams people sign you will not get payment legal requirement so rams is important and finally operational gap just i mentioned this is the technical performance is same how to fill between the gap technical performance and operational performance that is the rams how we are doing project in railway general process framework how to capture rams requirement like we, all the contractual we have to we have to fetch the requirement from the contract from the rams requirement and rams requirement how to fetch some guidelines are there in en 50126 128129 and we have to implement this way the time is very limited so some systematic way to collect the requirement rams and to implement it this is the metro system what i want to say everywhere if you broadly divide the whole metro project in three parts system works civil works and onm work that's all whole metro project because onm is also important finally we are designing train for the operation if we don't have proper onm procedure failure will be happen so reliability is here here also important here also important here also important so reliability if any point fail anywhere whole train will got disturbed in terms of reliability and of safety so that's why i want to say this here so rams is everywhere and for every system sub system and equipment guidelines standards are there okay and to to make whole framework one standard en50126 that gives the whole guideline even we are developing one switch also one register also one display unit also how to design how to develop how to verify this is under will give the rams parameters these are the stakeholders involved in the railway project maybe many are higher somebody is from the client side somebody pmc consultant maybe wpc contractor some third party engineer some aisa rdso regulatory so in railway project there are many parties involved okay and it is recommended every stakeholder at least one point of contact who understand the rams requirement how to implement and that is also one weakest chain in our ecosystem sometimes what happen clients is saying i don't bother about rams i have given contract to him he has to take care if he will not fulfill i will put penalty but this is not right way okay so that is the recommendation from the european standard <clears throat> and finally documentation rams has a separate kind of documentation high level documentation as the project level train level developed by the client as the consultant and respectively this will provide guideline to the contractor rolling stock signaling track power supply everybody can develop this kind of plans and how to do this some recommendation by en5126 what is happening here i have been part of many metro project the problem is design is finished now somebody called me sir i want to develop some ramps plan what to do ramps plan what to do ramps analysis because no sir because payment is not done so because this is lack of awareness and this is a gap i i recommend i request the higher authorities to implement some process to enforce the ramps in design because ramps is a design property it's not documentation documentation is not that is the major gap we are experiencing and that is the my intention to come here to display our thought process here <coughs> this is the process how to do we call the progressive ramps management means once concept done make requirement once design one done do some preliminary design do ram analysis then next progressively we can do it's not like that what we are doing now payment is waiting do all the ramps plan ram analysis and submit get payment it is only documentation work and that is the predominantly very popular in current scenario which we are trying to dilute <clears throat>
this is very important slide. I took around few hours to develop this. How standardization is working? Just now Dr. Gautam mentioned standardization. How to take? I think this, this will help RDSO to develop some insight. The first safety standard around the world, IC61508. From those standards, many industry specific standards like automotive, avionics, medical, everybody derives their standard. So sector specific standard has been derived from the IC. And that's why railways also. From railway, there are many standards for the rolling stock, railing, and many. But I'm the ramps expert. For ramps, there are many standards. EN 50126, 128, 129, 121 for AMC, 159 for comms. So once you are developing any hardware or software, any component, you have to think what the product belongs to you and how, what standard is applicable to you. This is the latest version. This is the older version. And this is the equivalent IC standard. Because many Japanese customers, they don't rely on the Indian standard. No, I will not rely on Indian because of something. I want IEC standard. So equivalent of this is this one. A similar thing, we can develop our own Indian standard. So which is aligned, standard or around the world is almost harmonized. You take any standard around the world, any standard, what do you want? American standard, Chinese standard, although Chinese are not disclosing this standard, but you can see almost 80% things are aligned as per engineering guidelines. So we can develop, we can take leverage, we can take advantage of European standards and we can develop our Indian standard. So this is a way we can develop and we can do it. Anybody wants to discuss, we can discuss later on. Time is very less. So this is the what standard you have to to which area. So this is the challenges. <coughs> it will take one minute. Specification and demonstration of RAMS requirement. So once the first point is a contract. If you see, if anybody has get a chance to work many metro projects, you can check almost 50% content are copy and paste. Okay, even I can see, I was working in Lucknow Metro. Somehow I could search and find Delhi Metro is coming. So this is because specification, they are, they are not writing specification for the metro. They are simply, you know, copy and paste. And somewhere, some specifications are design based, some are performance based. Something from copy and paste. So this is the gap. The first point is gap. The first point is gap, then whole field will be done the same way. So per recommendation, follow any standard. How to write requirement? You should write your own requirement. You can take some reference. Second, reliability is built in design. When design is finished, everything is finished. So, if you are not doing RAM analysis during design, there is no use of RAM analysis as safety analysis. Lack of subject matter expert. It is very new subject. The first RAM standard in the world comes into the, stand, in the limelight is around 2000, 20 years back. And we are running railway around 100 years, more than 100 years. The subject is new. That's why the aspects are less. And the more important, till date, we don't have any Indian company authorized to do safety certificate in India. Not till date, even RDSO having big experience, but they don't have any kind of expertise. They totally rely on the ISA. I'm not doubting on that, because that was the gray area, that has the gap where we can push in that. Okay, so we are totally dependent on the ISA, which are totally predominantly, not predominantly, 100% based upon the European standards and European ISA. So where we can play a big role and we can take advantage. Next, lack of management, management support. I'm the project director. My document is pending. I will tell first to finish a clearance. Rams is later on, we will see later on. So management is also not supporting. The subject is little, getting good, not good attention because everything commercial. And Lack of budget allocation. Suppose you are developing some display unit, and tomorrow ramps comes in the picture. Then you hire me. I will do ramps. I will take some dollars. So no, sir, it's not possible for me because I have never considered ramps costing my our product. So once you don't consider, definitely it's burden to you, and you try to dilute it. The so ramps is a cultural gap, and that is we need to put any designing. You must do some rhymes. 
Okay. Even contract is not saying you must do RAMs because it is the some kind of desirable property of the product, reliability and safety. Okay. I think that is enough. A uh, summary, system assurance is the holistic approach from day one to day, it is not a day one activity. System assurance activities project to project vary and all stakeholder must involve in RAMS activity from the concept. For your client, you write the requirement, your supplier, you do some proper design. RAMS requirements shall be specified well in advance, it is not like the last time. Okay. Irrespective of RAMS requirement specified in the contract, stakeholder must be must have their own RAMS and safety policy. So, even though your client is not asking, you do RAMS. This is good. You, you should know what is your product reliability, what is your product safety. Three standards EN 50126, 12829, 126 is the management of RAMS, 128129 for the safe software and hardware safety and 1 to 8 also for the guidelines for software and 1 to 9 for the safety case. So, it is a big standard, big summary which is not too easy, okay. at least one standard will take at least 6 months to study, but see very important thing and this is a very good gap in India where we can fulfill in that. Thank you all. Any question? You can take in later on. Hello. What a presentation to recall. That was indeed an amazing time with you and we had a lot of information and knowledge by your side. Can I please request uh, Mr. Nanduri Srinivas to kindly come up on the stage to facilitate this speaker. Mr. Srinivas, can we have you on stage please to felicitate the speaker first. Thank you, thank you so much. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.